amen and amen. Because all my life, he has been faithful. And all my life, he has been so good. And with every breath that I am able, how many know he's been faithful? How many know he's the only one that can and will be faithful? He's the only one. He's the only one. He's the only one that can and will be faithful. All of our lives, God has been faithful. And all our lives, he has been so, so good. So with every breath, that we are able, we should sing about the goodness of God. And all of our lives, his goodness has ran after us. And he's still running after us. He's so, so good, saints. All you got to do is think about his goodness. Think about how good he has been to you. And I think about how good he's been to me. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve any of it. None of it. But because he loves us so much and he don't want any to perish, he keeps running after us. He keeps running after us. When we run the other way, he's still running after us. When we don't want to do right, he's still running after us. When we don't want to go right, he's still running after us. His goodness, his goodness, his goodness is running after us. My God. David says, my God, Psalms 23, his mercy and his goodness shall follow me all the days of my life, all the days of your life and my life, he's running after us. His goodness is running after us. My God, my God, my God, my God, what a mighty good God we serve on today. Woo, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And Father, we humbly bow on today with thanksgiving in our hearts and thanksgiving on our lips. Thanking you for another day, oh, God. Thanking you for another opportunity, oh God, to hear your word. Now, Father, we ask you to prepare our hearts to receive your word on today. And let your word fall on good ground today, Lord. And when it fall, let it go deep down, oh God. Like David said, that I will hide your word in my heart, Lord, that I might not sin against you. So, Father, let your word go deep in our hearts today. And that it will manifest in due season. But thank you for it right now. 
I pray and ask you to hide Mary behind the cross. That people won't see me, God, but they'll see you in all of your glory. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. I can't sing like Michaela, but I'm going to sing a little bit of this right here. Because it's going to go with our subject on today. Amen. Thank you, Michaela, for that. Amen. 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 And old school goes like, get your mind right. Payday is coming. Oh, get your mind right. Payday is coming. 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 Mind right. Payday is coming. Payday is coming soon. Payday, 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 payday is coming soon. Get your mind right, payday is coming. Get your mind right, payday is coming. Payday is coming. Get your mind right, payday is coming. Right. Payday is coming, get your mind 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 right. Get your mind right. Payday is coming. 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 Come on, church. Payday is coming. Get your mind right. 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 Payday is coming. Everybody clap your hands. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Get your mind right. <laughs> Payday is coming. It is coming soon. You get your mind right. Payday is coming. Come on, somebody. How many ready for payday? I'm not talking about in the natural. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Payday is coming. Glory to God. Let's look at Romans. The second chapter, we're going to look at verses 6 through 16. Get your mind right. We've been talking about the mind and our thoughts. Glory to God, and we know our mind and thoughts be all over the place sometimes. But we got to get focused. The body of Christ has got to get focused.
because payday is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. How many of us is ready for his return? Are we ready? When I started out on this journey, he told me, you better tell him everywhere you go that I'm coming. Good God. But it's, our focus in, is on so many different things, we don't, we don't really believe it. Amen. But he's coming, and payday is coming. Romans, the second chapter, we're going to start at the sixth verse. And we're going to read down through 16. Amen. 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 And it's talking about God's righteous judgment. Romans 2, starting at verse 6. And it reads, my translation might read a little bit different from yours, but it's okay. And it reads, who will render to each one according to his deeds? Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jews first, and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Jew first and also the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law would, will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who shook the work of the law written in their hearts, who showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according, according to my gospel. Amen. Amen and amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. Payday is coming. Are you ready? Amen. Glory to God. And I just want to let you know that, hallelujah, hallelujah, payday is coming. Hallelujah. God will examine our hearts as well as our actions and will judge us fairly based on how we lived this life. So let's look at these verses, glory to God, in Romans 2, and see if we are ready for payday. Okay. I'm going to just give you this little story. A pastor of a small church once received the following letter. Pastor of this small church received this letter, and the letter was signed at the end, faithful member. And the letter read, Dear Pastor, you often stress attendance at worship as being very important for a Christian. But I think a person has a right to miss Sunday worship now and then. I think every person ought to be excused for the following reasons and the number of times indicated Christmas Sunday before or after New Year party lasts too long 
Easter, get away for the holidays. July the 4th, national holiday. Labor Day, need to get away. Memorial Day, visit hometown. School closings, kids need a break. Family reunions, mine's and my husband's. Sleep late, Saturday night activities. Death in the family, average two per year. Anniversary, second honeymoon. Sickness, one per family member. Business trips, a must. Vacation, three weeks. <laughs> Bad weather, ice, no rain, and the clouds. Ball game, six per season. Unexpected company, can't walk out. Time changes, spring ahead, fall back. Special on TV, the Super Bowl. Pastor, that leaves only one, two Sundays per year. So you can count us to be on church on the fourth Sunday in February and the third Sunday in August unless providentially hindered. Sincerely, a faithful member. Now we smile at this letter like this because we recognize it for what it is. <laughs> it is merely an excuse for avoiding worship. We are all guilty of making excuses for one thing or another. But excuses won't work when we stand before God. He will examine our hearts as well as our actions and will judge us fairly based on how we live this life. Mama sang that song, may the work I've done speak for me. In between that dash, when you leave here, nobody has to get up and say a thing about your life. Because between the day you were born and the day you die, your life is going to speak. Amen. As long as you got breath in your body, your life is being recorded. Solomon talks about it in Ecclesiastes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Solomon tells us, glory to God. Hallelujah. He's reminded us, God doesn't mind us enjoying uh, pleasure. He isn't upset that we like our jobs. He isn't upset that we enjoy food. He's not upset that we enjoy our possessions or our relationship. In fact, these are gifts from him. Problem comes when we look for meaning in these things. See, all of them things we named the reason why we're not at church, those were really pleasurable things. Amen. God don't mind that, but where is he at on the totem pole? Where is he at in your list? Come on, somebody. Payday is coming. So the question is, is God included in your pleasure? Let's look at Romans 2 to see if, if God is in our pleasure and, and if, if we're ready for payday. Okay. Romans 2, 6, 7, 10 through 11 tells us God will reward those who do good. Then it tells us in number 6, God will give each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. Glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. Come on, somebody. Now, if we left it at that, a lot of people might include themselves in this category. After all, they do good things. Perhaps they are generous, mostly honest, hardworking, and like to help other people. 
But here's the problem. They may do some good things, but they also do bad things. And good deeds do not cancel out bad ones. We need to remember who Paul is writing to and what situation he's dealing with. The Roman church started out as a Jewish church, but began accepting Gentile converts after a decade or more. Less than 20 years after it was founded, this Jewish church was suddenly 100% Gentile because the, the, the emperor kicked all Jews out of Rome. For five years, the church was led, influenced, and attended by Gentiles who had come to believe in Jesus. When the Jews were allowed to return to Rome, the church faced some serious itch issues. Some of the Jews began to look down on the Gentiles. After all, God had given his law to Jews, and Jesus was a Jew. Therefore, they assumed that the Jewish way of life should be the model lifestyle for all believers. The Gentiles was guilty of all kinds of evil things. Worst of all, they didn't even hardly know the law of Moses, like us today. What a shame. The church would, go, would no longer be in the hands of ignorant pagans. The Jews were back in town. Time to get back to normal. Now we see in... Uh, the first five verses of chapter 2, last week the Jews were just as guilty as the Gentiles. They were doing the same things as the, as the Gentiles. But though they could get, they thought they could get a home pass simply because they were Jews and knew the law so well. Just because you're going back to school this year, or we're getting ready to go back to school, young people. And a lot of y'all are going back to the same school, and some of you are not, and you're familiar with how things go. I don't want you to get the big head when you go back and think that just because I've been here a couple of years, I know what it's like. I know the teachers and all of this, so, you know, they're going to let me, you know. Kind of, uh, I got a little favoritism, or I'm going to be that favorite, or I'm going to be able to get away with certain things. I don't want you to have that mindset. Glory to God. I want you to have the mindset, glory to God, hallelujah, that you are going back to be the light. You are going back because some are coming, and they've never been in this type of setting. Good God, from Zion and then sometimes you're in a setting that you've never been in. Good God from Zion, and I want you to go in, and I want you to represent, and I want you to represent well. I want you to go in and let your light shine so that other people there that has never seen or heard about Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, will see you stand out, and they will come to you and say, hey, what's up with that? You're different. You look a little different. You act a little different. You sound a little different. Good God, you don't sound like us. You don't have the same language. You don't have the same vernacular. Glory to God. What is it about you that you're different? Good God from Zion, we hear everybody else talking all this other yang yang, but we hear you saying, praise God, glory to God, hallelujah. We see you praying and talking to people and, and helping people out. What is it about you? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, don't you go up in there, glory to God, because I'm the man, I'm the woman, and I've been there, glory to God, and I'm going to be pumped, and I'm going to be whatever. You go in there to be the light. You go in there to be a representation of who Jesus Christ is. Amen, glory to God, hallelujah. I don't know who that was for, but they weren't even in the message. Come on, somebody. Glory to God, it's time for us to stand up and let our light shine so men, women, boys, and girls can see our good works. Come on, somebody, because payday is coming. Glory to God, I know it's not popular, glory to God, hallelujah, to do what's right. I know it's not popular to say what's right. I know it's not popular to give away your money and help people out. I know it's not popular to wear your dresses down and cover your cleavage. I know that's not, po I know that's not popular. 
I know it's not popular for you to be nice to people, glory to God. I know it's not popular for you to help people out. But I stopped by today to let you know, glory to God, the payday is coming. And you're going to have to answer to God. We're going to have to answer to God, hallelujah, how we live our lives in this body. Glory to God, hallelujah, just because we think we got it all together. Brother Kenny, glory to God, and we're looking sharp, and we sounding sharp, and we riding good. Hallelujah, that don't say that we got it all together. Glory to God, hallelujah. A lot of times we done put on a rehearsal, we done, we done dressed up some mess, and we want people to think, glory to God, hallelujah, that I got it all together. Hallelujah. But it ain't in what people are looking at, glory to God. Because people are looking at you, but they're also listening to you, glory to God. They're listening at what's coming out, uh, glory to God, of you, glory to God, hallelujah. So what is coming out of you today, are you walking around and thinking that, oh God, I got it all together. I know I ain't got it all together. Come on, somebody, God is still working on me. Good God Almighty, and every once in a while, he'll let it come up to where I can see, glory to God, that he's still working on me. And I'm so thankful this morning that the Lord is still working on me. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. And I'm still waiting on him, and I'm still looking for him, and I'm still asking, I'm still waiting, I'm still seeking, glory to God, because I have not arrived. Good God Almighty. And I thank God today, hallelujah, that he keeps on speaking and he keeps on encouraging his own. Glory to God to don't give up. Don't fall by the wayside. He knows it gets hard sometimes. He knows we get tired sometimes. He knows we get beat down sometimes. He knows the struggles, glory to God. But I stopped by today to let you know, to tell you the payday is coming. Good God Almighty, you got to keep on doing what's right. You you got to keep on saying what's right. You got to keep on helping people. You got to keep on loving people. You got to keep on taking care of one another. You got to keep on looking into the hills from which cometh your help. Because all of our help comes from the Lord, the one who created heaven and earth. Don't get weary in well-doing. Because if you don't get weary, you're going to reap if you faint not. Oh, hallelujah. Payday is coming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as we get back to our text, hallelujah, because I'm sitting and I'm waiting and I'm talking to the Lord and I'm saying, Lord, Lord, good God Almighty, hallelujah. Sometimes I don't know which way to go. Sometimes I don't know what to say. Sometimes I don't know what to do. But one thing about it, hallelujah, God knows what needs to be said. And he, knew, he knows what needs to be done. So sometimes we got to wait on the Lord. And we got to be of good courage. Hallelujah. We got to wait. We can't run ahead of him. We can't say what we want to say. We can't do what we want to do. We got to wait. I said wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, payday is coming. Hallelujah. I know that everybody's doing their own thing. Everybody is looking to everything else for what they need. Everybody's trying to figure this thing out. Glory to God, even Solomon and all of his wisdom. When you go back over into, hallelujah, the book of Ecclesiastes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's trying to figure out what is this thing called life and even if it's worth it. How many, how many, how many, how many, how many? Good God Almighty. How many, just like the Gentiles, they heard this message about the gospel and they got in on it. Glory to God, hallelujah. They got in on it and then the Romans got mad. Good God Almighty, because they'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We the Jew and the Jews first now. Come on, y'all got to go by what we said, what they said in the law. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why they were getting mad with Jesus, because Jesus was a Jew, but Jesus came on the scene. Glory to God with the kingdom message. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. They weren't ready for that because they was trying to make people do things that they won't do in their own self. They were getting mad. 
Hallelujah. Who is these people right here? They won't born no Jew. Good God, how they going to come on the scene and reap all the benefits? The same thing with us. Hallelujah. Looking at us down their nose and looking at us funny. Glory to God. Who called you? Who told you that you was this and you was that? Who called you to preach? Who gave you some license? They didn't do it like they said it's supposed to be done, so you ain't qualified. Says who? The devil is a liar. Good God. If it was up to man, glory to God, and if it was up to man's way and along, we would have never got in. But thank God for Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He paid the price for all of us. So we all got a right to the tree of life. All we got to do is acknowledge, good God Almighty, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. The only way through the Father is you got to admit that you're a sinner. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. You can't save yourself. Glory to God, hallelujah. We need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And when we admit, good God from time, that we are a sinner, the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So who am I to point my finger? at you. Who are you to point your finger at me? Especially when I make a mistake. How you gonna charge it to me? It's already been charged to Jesus. You can't charge nothing to nobody because you ain't paid for nothing. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Today we gotta get it right. Hallelujah. 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 There's a judge that's going to judge. Hallelujah. One day good God Almighty and he's going to give us a reward for how we live this life. Good God Almighty and we thank God this morning for our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Those who do persistently do good will be rewarded with good. What will they receive? They're going to receive eternal life. They're going to receive glory. They're going to receive honor and peace. And those who do what is right will live forever. The glory refers to God's glory that will shine on them and as they enjoy his presence forever. Honor speaks of God's approval and blessing. Peace seems to indicate the peace that will be found in heaven. No more turmoil, pain, sin, or death. These things and more await those who do the right things in this life. You got to do the right thing in this life. Good God, you can't wait till you're in the grave because when you get in the grave, you can't do nothing. You got to do right now. Good God Almighty. Now, if we left it at that, a lot, a lot of people might include themselves in that category. After all, they do good things. Perhaps they're generous. Mostly honest. We said that. We need to remember who Paul is writing to. He's dealing with this Roman church. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. And the Romans, you know, they, they the big dogs, as we would say. They the ones that have it all together. They the ones that know the law. They are the ones that dictate to you and I. Hallelujah. Because it says, after all, God had given his law to Jews and Jesus was the Jew. Therefore, they assumed that the Jewish way of life should be the model lifestyle for all believers. The Gentiles were, were guilty. We were all guilty of all kinds of things. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at uh, first five verses of chapter two. Okay? Five. Good God above. But in, in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are, are trust, treasuring up for yourselves wrath. In the day of wood, in, in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's going to render to each one according to our deeds. The things that we're doing, good God Almighty, who are we doing those unto? When we're doing what we're doing, who is unto? 
is supposed to be unto God. But who is it really unto? Why are you doing what you do? Why do we do what we do? <clears throat> is it for ourselves to bring pleasure and glory to ourselves? Is it for uh, people to pump us and pat us on our back? That's between you and God. Let's skip over to Romans 3. Let's go to Romans 3, 3, 9 through 12, and it reads, What then are they better? So now we read about those who persistently do good and find their reward in heaven. We have to wonder who Paul is talking about, okay? So when we go to Romans 3, 9 through 12, we'll find out. Romans 3. Nine. It says, what then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whoever, whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But we know that the righteousness came through what? God, apart from the law, is revealed being witnesses by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who, be who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that we previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So we see that Jews and Gentiles are alike are all under sin, and as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is nobody that does good. Hallelujah. So what, what, what then do we say to this matter? What can we say to this matter? Only those that have put their faith in Christ Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, will be justified justified. Paul showed that no one can claim innocence. Everyone has sinned, but through Christ's death on the cross, God has redeemed us all. And when we live according to the word of God, hallelujah, hallelujah, we shall receive a reward. And when the Bible says when Jesus comes, his reward is what? It's going to be with him. So today as I stand before you, I'm asking you the question, are you ready for payday? The life that you're now living in this flesh, is there a payment for you? Is there a payment for me? Hey, oh shata. Good God, everything that we've done what have we done it for? Who have we done it unto? Have it been for our own good? Have it been for our own pleasure? 
Remember, I told you God don't have a problem with you enjoying your life. He don't have a problem with that. Matter of fact, he came that you enjoy life. He came, but you got to remember, hallelujah, who gave you life. You got to remember who you are living for. You got to remember who's bought you with their precious blood. You got to remember, hallelujah, that you, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, have been set apart for his glory. Come on, somebody. Y'all sitting there about to go to sleep on me, and y'all looking like y'all don't know what's going on. Good God Almighty. If I tell you that, that your welfare check going to get here next week, good God Almighty. And I wish I were getting one on next week, but I'm not getting one yet. But I'm going to get one after a while. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And when the Lord is blessing you and them checks is rolling in that way, in that, in that mail, good God Almighty. Or when you go into that job, good God Almighty. And that money is coming in, good God Almighty. Have you put up for your insurance? of protection in the kingdom of God. When you get that check next week, or when you get that checks two weeks down the road, will you put aside, good God Almighty, your insurance policy money? And I ain't talking about the life insurance. Lord, don't mind us. Having a little pleasure. He don't mind us going on cruises. He don't mind us getting married and enjoying our partners. He don't mind any of that. Good God Almighty. But I'm going to tell you when we get in trouble and how we've got in trouble with our people and our partners and, and our jobs and these things that we look to. Let me tell you how we've gotten in trouble. Good God Almighty. The problem comes when we look for meaning in these things. We look for meaning in these things. We look. Uh, we're looking for meaning. We're looking for meaning in, okay, this relationship. We're looking for meaning in this job. We're looking for meaning in these gifts that God has given, in our possessions, okay? But we're looking unto them to do something for us that they were not designed to do. Hey, glory to God. You're looking for your wife or your husband to do something that they were not designed to do. You're looking for your children. To do something that they were not designed to do. Or they were not designed to provide. You're looking for your wife or your spouse to provide this and that. Well, guess what? So the question then is, is God included in all of this? In, in all that we do, is God included? And the reason I'm asking is because we got to know that payday is going to come. But the only way that we're going to get a real payoff in this life and the next life is that he's first. Is that we've decided that I'm going to do everything according to what he said in his way. So if I'm going to get any real pleasure out of my relationship with my husband or wife, God has to be first. We got to be on the same accord. Good God Almighty. We got to be serving the same God. We got to be saying the same thing. We got to be going in the same direction. Now, if you're saying one thing and they do doing another thing, and you're going with God, but they're going with another little G, well, we're going to have some hiccups and bumps, and we're going to have some problems. We're really not going to be able to enjoy the relationship that he wants us to enjoy. Because you're going in one direction, they're going in another. Good God Almighty. And see, they're getting paid right now, but guess what's going to happen later on? After all, who can enjoy life apart from God? 
Now, I can speak for me and my husband when we were in the world. <laughs> now, we thought we was enjoying life because we was enjoying the things that we both could come together and produce. We were enjoying the things and we were enjoying the, the, the flesh and we was enjoying those things, glory to God. We thought we was, but we still was doing other stuff too now. We thought we were enjoying. We weren't enjoying. We were fooling ourselves. And we really didn't start enjoying until we came together and got on one accord and decided we were going to do it God's way. Now, you can make all the money you want to make. You can do everything that you want to do. You can acclaim and acquire all the wealth that you want to. But until God is in it, you will not enjoy it. You will not enjoy it. But when you put God first in everything you do, you will be able to enjoy it. And when problems arise, glory to God, because they're going to rise, you'll be able to come together and say, you know what? Well, God got this. We ain't got to worry about this. I know it look bad. It don't look like whatever. But God got this too. So you know what we're going to do? Oh, we're going to keep on keeping on in God. We're going to keep on giving God the glory. We're going to keep on paying our tithe. We're going to keep on going to church. We're going to keep on loving people. We're going to keep on taking care of people. We're going to keep on being faithful and doing what God has called us to do. Because one day, oh God, one day, it is coming. Glory to God. I know sometimes I feel like, is it all worth it? Sometimes I feel like people don't appreciate you, and they really don't. But I stop by the day to let you know that God is watching, and the tape is rolling. Good God Almighty. Some things you done, you don't forgot all about. And I'm talking about those good things. But God, with his good self, he ain't forgot about it. Good God Almighty. And he is going to reward you in this life and in the next life to come. So I stop by the day to let you know payday is coming. It don't matter what they think they know. It don't matter what they're saying about you and me. What matters is will we as a body of Christ, as this branch of Zion, be found faithful, doing what God has called us to do. It don't matter who come or go. What matters is, will you and me be found faithful, doing what God has called us to do? Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I can only speak for Barry Dickens because I want you to know, brother, that sometimes it get a little hard and sometimes it feel like you want to throw in the towel and sometimes, good God Almighty, because you are flesh and blood, you want somebody to love you and love you for real. You want somebody to recognize you sometimes. You want somebody to come to your rescue sometimes. You want somebody in this life now to think about you because you're always pouring out. You're always giving out. And you are saying, good God Almighty, when is somebody, anybody, glory to God, and then God, with his good self, he'll send somebody by every once in a while to let you know, oh, you on the right path, stay right there, I see you, I got you, don't worry about the naysayers, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, I got you, I 
I got you. I got you in the palm of my hand. And because in the palm, no one can take you out. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. No, it looks like, feels like, sometimes you're all by yourself. You done put out. You done gave. You done done everything you know to do. Good God. And it still feel like there's no appreciation. But I stopped by today to let you know payday is coming. Keep doing what's right. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Keep doing your duty. Keep being faithful at that thing God has called you to do. Don't change. Keep doing it. I know you get tired. I know it look a little crazy sometimes. And you be saying, God, we ain't God. But in his perfect timing, good God Almighty, hallelujah, hallelujah, when it look like Brother Hawker Day, when you're going down for the last time, when it look like you ain't going to make it, I start my name to let you know you going to make it, you going to make it, you going to make it, keep doing what's right, keep doing what's right, God is recording, God is recording, I know it look crazy, I know people are talking about you, but that's alright, that's alright, let them talk, you keep doing what's right, cause God is recording, he's recording, he's recording, he's not looking at the outward appearance, but he's looking at your heart, and when your heart is turned right before God, hallelujah, 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 he's going to take care of everything, 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 everything is going to be all right. We get perturbed sometimes about what people are thinking about us and what people are saying about us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Sometimes it causes us to feel a certain type of way. Good God of mine. Hallelujah. But I want to encourage you to keep doing what's right. Hallelujah. I know sometimes you get down to your last dime because you done gave it out trying to help somebody. Good God Almighty. I want you to know when you gave it out, you was just casting it in your future because that thing is going to come back to you and it's going to come back just when you need it. Good God Almighty. The Bible says. He gives seed to the sower. So when he give you that seed, he made for you to cast that seed upon the water. And that seed that you cast out, it's going to come back. It's going to come back in due season. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. Come on and give him. Come on and give him a hand clap of praise. You don't know how it's going to come back. It's going to come back just when you need it. Glory to God. And the other thing I want to remind you, good God Almighty, what you're looking for out here in this world, hallelujah, you will never find the pleasure that you're looking for in this world because what you really need is in God. You have to look to him. He's the only one that can fulfill what you really need. Your wife can't do it. Your husband can't do it. And please stop looking at those children. They can't do it either. Only God. Only God can supply what you really need. 
glory to God. We buy children toys all the time. Good God Almighty. But when we grow up, hallelujah, all we do is buy us bigger toys. Good God Almighty. And some of us got so much stuff. Good God Almighty. We don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I stop by the day <laughs> to let you know. <laughs> Why don't you give some of that away? <laughs> don't be like the rich, wrong, young ruler. <laughs> thinking <laughs> that he can buy a ticket to heaven. <laughs> you can't buy no ticket to heaven. <laughs> I don't care <laughs> how much money you got. <laughs> it won't buy your way into heaven. <laughs> you got to come under. <laughs> Just like the rest of us, <laughs> you gotta come under <laughs> and you gotta admit <laughs> that you are sinner. <laughs> you are <a> sinner. <laughs> you are <a> sinner <laughs> until you admit <laughs> that you need Jesus <laughs> and you accept Him. <laughs> Good God Almighty, <laughs> come on and give Him a hand clap of praise. Your money, good God Almighty, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> when you get ready to leave here, <laughs> and when I get ready to leave here, <laughs> I don't care what we have accumulated, <laughs> good God Almighty, <laughs> it does us well <laughs> to make sure <laughs> we've allocated it appropriately <laughs> through wisdom of the words, <laughs> and we make sure we leave it in right hands. <laughs> So that people can continuously be blessed. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are accumulating all that wealth. Good God Almighty. And you thinking that wealth causes you to be who you are. I stop by the day to let you know. Without Jesus, sacrifice and Calvary. And if you don't accept that, you and your web both going to perish. But I stop by the day to let you know. If you want to be a real disciple, sell everything you got and follow him. Sell everything you got and follow him. But some of us, that is hard for us to do because we got a lot of things and we put our trust in those things. And those things is bringing some of us heartaches. Stop by the day to let you know. Pay day. Is coming. <laughs> We're going to give an account uh, of the deeds uh, done in this body. <laughs> and the tape won't stop uh, until you stop. <laughs> Good God Almighty. <laughs> when you stand before him. <laughs> Good God Almighty. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and he play your tape. <laughs> What's going to be on your tape? <laughs> what is it going to say about you? <laughs> You're not going to be able to say, no, that ain't me. <laughs> Good God Almighty. He going to have your name <laughs> written all over it. <laughs> so that's one lie you won't get away with. So it's just best to let's get it right now. Let's get it right now. While we got breath in our body. Because if we think we fooling anybody, you might be fooling me. You might be fooling your parents. You might be fooling your mama. You might be whoever you think you're fooling. You might be fooling them. But one thing is for sure, you ain't fooling God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And those that are doing right, and you know you're doing right. See, God going to reward you. He going to reward you in this life. And in the life to come. So I just want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. And let you know. That payday. Is coming. Keep it at the forefront. And the forethought. Of your mind. We don't know when. He's going to call us home. Or we don't know when. He's going to return. But those are two things that we know. That are guaranteed to happen. 
Hallelujah. We came into this world naked. And we're going to leave here naked. And, you know, we're going to leave here naked now. Or you can get up out of here without this flesh. Hey, this flesh can't enter in. It can't, it can't go up out of here. So we're going to leave this flesh here. Amen. So get out of love with your flesh. Good God, because it's going back to dust. Hallelujah. It's going back to dust. Get out of love with your flesh. It's going back to dirt. And one thing about it, Pastor, it don't, it don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how much money you don't have. We all going back to dirt. We all are going back to dirt. So, today, as I speak, I want you to know, payday is coming. And make sure the deeds that you're doing, make sure everything that you're doing is as unto the Father. Because that's what you're going to really get paid for. And you better really make sure you're doing that that he's called you to do. Not somebody else's. You ain't going to get paid for that. Payday is coming. Good God. And you're not getting paid because of your nationality. You're not getting paid because of your sexuality. You're not getting paid according to any of that. You're getting paid according to his word. And how well you obeyed and did what he told you in his word. Now you might think you're doing all right. Outside of his word, you probably think you are. But when you get in that word and you look at what you're doing, Compared to what he said in his word, then you got to ask yourself, what am I doing? Your righteousness, our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's no righteousness in anyone. Our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. And when the father look at us and we accept Jesus, he see his righteousness. He see what he's done. So it behooves us not to be in him. Come on, somebody. Y'all went to sleep on me today. Oh. I know the devil don't want you to hear this, but you better hear this word. Payday is coming, and some of y'all is sooner than you know. Come on, somebody. The Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. The day nor the hour. Good God Almighty. So it behooves us not to live every day like it was our last day. Because guess what? One day it will be. And when that day comes, will you be ready for payday? Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. I want to be ready. When he comes, I want to walk. I want to walk in Jerusalem. I want to talk. I want to talk in Jerusalem. I want to sing. I want to sing in Jerusalem. Just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready when he comes. How many want to be ready? I want to walk. I want to walk. I want to talk. I want to sing. Just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. When he comes. Will you be ready? 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 If you know you won't be ready, you need to get ready. Hallelujah. 